Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Darth Cinema and welcome back to another Ruby Volume 5 news video. Guys, I just woke up today and immediately started my search for brand new Ruby information. And guys, we've got uh, quite a bit to go through. Um, I did not know that there was a Ruby Twitch stream going on during RTX, so now that makes me look like the fool. But I'm going to be telling you guys uh, everything we've learned from the Twitch stream. So, here we go. There's a lot of information to go through. Little time to do it, so let's uh, jump through it. So, guys, first thing, Pumpkin Pete cereal is happening, along with a bunch of other merchandise for the show. Uh, I am very excited. So, despite Pira's uh, claims that the cereal isn't very good, I'm going to have to buy a, a, a box of Pumpkin Pete. Uh, I hope there's, like, a box top, like, a special, like, box top. Maybe with John's face on the top. That'd be, that'd be really funny. I, I like that. Uh, Volume 5 obviously premieres October 14th. We talked about that. Uh, the three character shorts um, will premiere before Volume 5 airs. They showed one for Weiss on the stream, and it will be out in about a week for everyone to see. So that one was actually through a little error on the uh, Rooster Teeth's part because they ended up showing a bit of it uh, instead of the commercial they were supposed to cut to, and that animation looked gorgeous. Uh, just fantastic it was weiss in her original um uh, like volume one through three kind of uh that that original dress we saw her in that's fantastic uh also not all character shorts will be combat focused this is amazing i want to see what else they're going to do um on a more somber note, Monty's brother showed up uh, cosplaying Ironwood. He brought Haloid and dead fantasy posters he found on an old hard drive from Monty and gifted them to the animation department. So that's just extremely nice. I know his brother, I believe Monty's brother lives not too far from actually where I live here in the Northeast. Uh, so and he likes to do get-togethers with... Um, Ruby fans, so. Uh, this one's actually pretty interesting, because I know quite a few people were talking about this. Someone was asking about Tyrion calling Ruby a bitch, and adding curse words in general, because they said they wouldn't do that on a panel a couple of years ago. They said they wanted to be specific about who uses them and why. Also, the show is growing up. In that scene, it just fit the character and situation, so they decided to do it there and then, but they don't want to throw it in just to throw it in, and some words will probably never be said on the show. Well, personally, I, given the context of the situation, I think Tyrion calling Ruby a bitch for cutting off his damn tail was quite justified. Uh, on a happier note, we are getting more Ruby information at New York Comic Con. So, yes, that's going to be awesome. Uh, we also got a little bit of backstory on Remnant in general. Uh, someone asked how Jean got Pierre's weapons after the fall of Beacon. That probably won't be covered on the show, but Carrie said he imagines Crow picking it up when he got Ruby. Miles mentioned something about spare pieces of armor, because Pyrrha probably owned more than one. Uh, someone asked about whether or not Remnant has more than one language. Carrie j said just the proper way to speak German, so I fully support people throwing German into fan fictions, but uh, that's the person who wrote this. Uh, but on a more serious note, they said yes, probably, and it would be fun to explore that, but they probably won't have the time to cover it. Uh, fun fact, Vic Mignogna records all of his lines home alone in L.A. Uh, Ruby's dream in Volume 4, the one where he heard Pure's voice, uh, was, uh, just about Ruby trying to cope with what had happened, and also an effect of her overhearing Pure's voice every night while Jean is training. Um... Uh, and the two most exciting bits of news, guys, uh, that I think a lot of us uh, Ruby fans and Rooster Teeth fans are going to love. Uh, first, that there is going to be, there might be some exciting news leaking alongside EVO. Now, for those of you who don't know, EVO is one of the biggest fighting game tournaments in the world. This is where you see stuff for Mortal Kombat, Injustice, all of these huge fighting games. This is where everything goes down. If this is a possible tease to a Ruby fighting game, it, whether in the vein of Street Fighter or uh, Injustice or something along those lines, like a 2D fighter. Holy shit, would that be good? 
I am absolutely 100% behind this idea. Uh, while Grim Eclipse, I feel I enjoyed Grim Eclipse. It's a fun game for me. I do understand that some people find it uh, very repetitive. And it really wasn't what they wanted it to be. Personally, I like the game, though I understand why people don't like the game. Uh, the fighting game, totally 100% behind it. Let me know what you would do for a fighting game for Ruby in the comments below, because God knows we have enough characters to throw in for one. And finally, uh, a new RT animated show is coming up soon, though it will not be this year. It's going to be called Genlock. Something sci-fi with robots. It's very uh, vague. We don't know that what that much about it. Though that is pretty much all the information we have right now coming out of uh, for Ruby Volume Five. Uh, we will. I will be covering more as I hear it. Uh, New York Comic Con. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry, guys. Again, I just woke up early in the morning. Uh, again, New York Comic Con's coming up, so I'm gonna cover that. Uh, if I hear any more information. Uh, about Ruby. I will obviously cover that as soon as I am able. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this short little uh, recap of news for Ruby Volume 5. Keep your eyes posted in about a week or so. If that Weiss trailer ends up coming out, I will most certainly give my impressions on that. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day, and I will see you later. Take care.